Uh, we have one more speaker today, my old friend and frequent Mad Hedge speaker, Anka Metcalf. Anka, can you hear me? Hi, John. Yes, I can. Thank you for having me today. How are things in sunny Florida? Uh, things are really good in sunny Florida. Actually, I'm in Michigan right now because we have some construction going on on our house. And I ran away from all the dust. <laughs> I don't blame you and the noise. No, it, absolutely. Well, try walking around your house when you just had them ref when the floors refinished. <laughs> I went through, I don't know how many pairs of socks because of that. Oh, it's uh, terrible. Why don't you go ahead and get your PowerPoint up? I'll read your introduction. Anka is a professional trader with 20 years of trading experience plus in stocks and futures, who spent over a decade working in investment banking prior to becoming a full-time trader. She's the founder and CEO of Trade Out Loud, an international trading education company designed to help level trader fast track their trading and achieve their trading goals. She's an expert day trader, swing trader and active investor with a precise approach to daily income style and wealth generation trading, delivering results in any market environment. The strategy she teaches in her courses and her live daily approach to trading provide you with the understanding and tools to take you, your trading to the next level. She personally manages her own accounts and shares her market knowledge and trades live every day with her clients worldwide. Over the years, she has created a unique and highly successful, simple and easy to follow trading system based on multi-layer price support and resistance levels coordinated with proprietary trigger times, market tempo, multi-time frame alignment, synchronicity, divergence, and a proprietary set of rules that enable her to and her traders to be very selective, patient, and find high odds trades with ease and sharp, laser sharp presentation. So uh, I know this is gonna be great because I've listened to many of your presentations in the past. You have uh, until five minutes before the hour, at which point we'll give away the last of today's traders. So. The floor is yours, and thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, John, for the presentation. And yes, I will be sharing uh, some of the things that you have uh, mentioned today in this presentation. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. The market is closed. The stock market has just closed right now. It's the top of the hour. It's 4 o'clock. And typically, this is a hands-off, right, uh, time, uh, time of the day when mice down and walk away from your computer. But if you're new to trading, guess what? This is the time to analyze your trades. And this is the time to get, roll up your sleeves and say, hey, what trades did I take today? Let's analyze them. What did I do good? What did I do wrong? And there's a really easy way to do that when you know how to do your self-analysis uh, on, on the trace that you have done, right? But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So um, let's uh, talk about how you two can generate a six to, figure, six to seven figure income. And for some traders, they'll go like, wow, this is like totally impossible or it's really hard to achieve. I'll show you how it can be done even with a smaller trading account size. So, and this is done by only trading two hours a day or less. So for example, on Friday, we took a trade and we were done at 10 o'clock or 10, 15 or something like that. So you basically uh, alleviate over trading when you trade this strategy. And we, when you trade with me, I can teach you how it's done. And you can also trade with me. This is what I do every single day, Monday through Friday. Uh, and this is only trading the New York trading session, right? It's rich, it's powerful, you have velocity, you have volume, you have volatility, you have every element in the book to make money fast. All right, so let's get started, everyone. Um, before we actually dive in, you know, I want you guys to think about your financial objective for 2022. What is your financial objective? What do you really want to accomplish? Because you guys are here, you evidently are interested in trading, whether it's investing, short term trading, medium trade, uh, medium term trading, like swing trading. Uh, so you're interested in trading and you're interested in developing a niche, depending on your lifestyle, depending on your availability to be in front of the computer. Uh, so 
when you think about trading, you have to think about, hey, I want a trading plan that fits my lifestyle and fits my schedule. So what would that be? Where would that be placed? So when you want to trade your way to financial freedom, that it will be your starting point. So from that point on, you can decide and say, hey, I'm going to trade stocks or I'm going to trade cryptos or I'm going to trade futures or I'm going to trade Forex. See what resonates with you. I'm going to present actually today some of the advantages of trading futures and some of the advantages and disadvantages from, for trading stocks. And it's really hard for me to admit because I love trading stocks and I have diverted from trading stocks, from day trading stocks about nine to 10 years ago. Uh, definitely, I was pushed into this direction by the uh, amount of taxes that I was paying for my stock trading. And it was a little bit complicated reporting. And my accountant advised me that, hey, why don't you look into futures trading? Because that is a different bracket. And definitely, it's a lot more uh, you have a lot more tax advantages than trading stocks. So that's when I looked at it. I already knew how to trade and I already have leveled the playing field because I was already watching the market, right? The cues, the spies, the diamonds, et cetera. So for me, it was an easier transition into futures. Instead of, you know, watching a plethora of stocks every morning, I would divert it to just watching four indices in the morning. So you go from 6,000 stocks to four charts. So that's really... Um, um, simp that's, that's one of the things that I loved about futures market because it definitely simplified my life. So with, with anything that you start, you need to have a blueprint. You need to have that pre-map trajectory that is going to take you to your position, let's say B or C or where you want to be at the end of 2022. Uh, volatility is very high and will remain high throughout the year of 2022. So it is going to be a very, very turbulent year. Uh, in fact, not only let's not talk about 2022, let's talk about the context of this week. You have geopolitical context, right, with Russia and Ukraine. You have uh, the FOMC meeting that is this Wednesday. So you have the Fed decision. Are they going to raise rates? Like big question mark, all right? So what if we're going to have a surprise? I think that if the Fed is not going to raise the rates and say, hey, due to the inflation and everything that's going on, the market may likely see this as a positive and may start move higher. If they raise interest rates, I don't think the market is going to love it that much because ever since they came uh, with the first FOMC meeting in January where they announced a set of rate hikes, the market didn't like it and started acting up. They started, the market beca became a little bit more volatile, started to pull back. So evidently that the market did not like that. And third, but not least, we have the quadruple witching option expiration, which is this Friday. So volatility is here to stay. Look no further than this week. I mean, it's here to stay. Some of the reasons I have already mentioned, the Russia-Ukraine war, the FOMC raising rates in March, or will they, <laughs> okay? Inflation, uh, gas shortages, food shortages, they're already talking about these topics that are pretty scary out there. Then you have midterm elections. So how can you hedge against all of these things that are literally independent of you and what you do in your life, right? Because everything is definitely going to affect you. Before we dive in, uh, I just wanted to announce that Trade Out Loud has been named Benzinga overall winner for best financial literacy tool out of 400 distinguished companies revolutionizing fintech. So we were the number one winner in the best financial literacy tool for education and for the services provided. So that speaks volume to us. So how much money can you actually make trading only two hours a day? Obviously, you know, it's really in strict correlation with the market environment and how much you can pull out of the market. But in January 2022, so not that far ago, when the market started behaving a little bit erratic, we, for example, had a win ratio of 72%. 
right? So that's really a massive win ratio taking into consideration the market environment. Last month, so not, not further than two weeks ago, we closed up the month again with a win ratio of 72%. You can have, you have, and you actually have access to the full portfolio that is on our website. It's fully transparent. You can see all the trades that we take, that we took with the timing, with the uh, direction, with the symbol that we traded, with the entry price, the stop price, the trailing, the targets that we had, and the final exit position with the percentages and the total accumulated, calculated by one contract, ca calculated based on one contract. So, for example, you know, in 2021, 2021 was again a rough year because we had spikes of volatility and we had spikes of chop. Uh, and we ended the year with 161,000 per contract realized. So if you took my class or, you know, if you were in the trading room and you followed my direction 100%, this is the kind of return that you can expect if you only trade it with one contract. And a lot of you guys will ask, okay, so how much money do I really need to have in my account in order to produce this return? In order for you to take all the trades that are called, you need to have an account between $30,000 and $50,000 in order to uh, execute the same trades that I do. Can you take them with a smaller size account? Yes, you can, because you could have a $5,000 account. You can take all the trades using micro, so instead of the full-size contract, and you could still replicate, uh, repl replicate the trades that I take but in a smaller size. So it's all about position sizing and the uh, and the amount of money that everybody has in their trading accounts. Uh, these are the results from 2020. 2020 was again, a very rough year with, with, with where we had pandemic hit, right? And it was very difficult in February and March. And in fact, you can see that in March, we have the best return ever for the trading room, for myself personally. 92% win ratio. This was like phenomenal, right? So uh, if you don't know, uh, you know, a lot about me, uh, my name is Anka Metcalf and I'm the CEO and founder of tradeoutloud.com, which is a trading education that is uh, um, designed to help uh, individuals learn how to day trade and swing trade the futures and the equities market. You could also trade options super successfully using my method. So if you guys want to get a hold of us, you can reach us at tradeoutloud.com and learn more about what we do and learn more about our method and our trading. So let's talk about fear. Okay, what is holding you back? What is holding you back from committing to trading? What is holding you back from your next success in trading? So it has to do with fear, right? There's that fear, fear of failure, right? You project the fear uh, before you actually take the trade and the outcome is going to be negative, right? So there are some things about trading that a lot of people, a lot of traders, you know, rarely discuss. This is about confidence. It's about conviction. It's about patience. Conviction comes and conviction, confidence, and patience comes from knowledge exclusively. If you lack the knowledge, you will be impatient. You will not have confidence in your trading because trading is almost like math. You have to know exactly where your entry is. You have to know exactly where you want to place your stop. You want to know exactly where you would like to pull your money out of the market, your targets. You want to know how to trail into those, uh, into those targets. And if you don't know how to do that, you will lack confidence and you will lack conviction. And therefore, you're going to be tempted just to jump in the trade. And correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of traders, you know, when they see green candles, they just jump into trades or jump in to the long side. When they see red, they jump to the short side. Little they know that, for example, there are areas in the market where these areas become reactionary. So when they jump in, usually after quite an impressive move or a big move, or even can be a small move, uh, that could be the end of the move. So that also comes from knowledge. Do you also need mental toughness? Why do you need mental toughness? Well, here's the thing. 
when you go through a rough patch. So for example, in this market, it's very common to have often stops, especially if you're a day trader, because the market is very choppy, the market is very, you know, scary at times and very violent. You've seen the moves that are happening, especially in the first 15 to 30 minutes in the morning, they're very violent. One minute you think that the market is going to crash and all of a sudden the market rips to the upside. If you're watching, definitely we're talking about day trading. So you need to have that discipline and also mental toughness uh, in order to wait. That comes with the patience kicks in again to wait for the perfect setup. And even if at times, even if you have the perfect layout, the perfect setup with the analysis that is just uh, you know, just perfect for that specific trade, you can still have a stop. And stops are very, very common in this kind of market environment. It's not you, it's the market. And I could, I could tell you this. So here's a little secret. When I'm trading, when I'm trading smaller time frames, when I'm trading, for example, the open, and when I'm trading within the first 30 minutes or within the first hour, because like I said, I'm all done in two hours. I'm done. I don't want to sit here and start, you know, hyper analyzing the market and day trade. There are traders that do. Kudos to them. I like to focus on my swing trading in the afternoon. I like to scan. I like to look for different trading opportunities uh, for my long term money. But the, the problem with the mental toughness is that usually when a trader incur, uh, encounters one stop, mm, you know, they feel like, oh, yeah, OK, I stopped out, but there is another chance to get back in. They get back in. Sometimes they get back in recklessly. Let's say they didn't get in recklessly. So they got in on the next best, beautiful buy setup and technical technicals were aligned, everything like that. So you encounter another stop and then the trader gets a little bit more discouraged. And what does the trader do the third time around? The, the third time around, usually there are two things that are happening. Either they double in the trade to try to make their money all in one shot, huge mistake. The second thing that they do is they chicken out and yep, that's a technical term. And uh, what they do is they take the less, they take the trade with less risk. So I'm not saying that's bad, but that's not, that's, that doesn't drive to consistency. That doesn't conduce, it's not conducive to consistency. In trading, you need to allocate the same risk amount on each and every single trade. Why do you think algorithms are so successful? Well, they have a really high degree of stopouts. Let me tell you right, right now. They usually stop out about 52 to 55% of the time. Yep, more than half. But the because they go trade after trade after trade after trade that meet their parameters because of the large volume of the trades that they do and the fact that they never miss an opportunity, they come out ahead. OK, and then, of course, let's talk about discipline, right? Discipline, you need to have discipline, discipline to identify the market condition, discipline to say, hey, this is too choppy for me. I'm not going to be a liquidity provider in this market. I'm just going to stand back. And of course, education, right? You need to have the proper trading education. You need to know how to read the trends. You need to know how the entry points, you need to know how to read the anatomy of the trade, where to get in, where to get out, where to place the stop, where are the targets, management, psychology. So all that strategy, the strategy that you're going to deploy in a volatile market, the strategy that you're going to deploy in a trending market, whether high or low, right? Whether long or short. So you need to have that that education that is going to put you out there to have the confidence, to have the conviction, to have the patience. For example, when I came into the market this morning, I looked at the market and I'm like, I just want to walk away because it was very, very choppy. And then I found my trading opportunity and I took it. I'm going to show you right now. So all these represent about 90% of the battle. So regardless of your trading psychology of philosophy, if your head's not right, you won't be successful because you need to have education is what is empowering you. All right. So, for example, this is the open. Right. And as you can see, you know, when the market opened, it just shot up, got into a confluence resistance area. And then the market went back down and it was like low, 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 low. I didn't have a setup to act on this. And we had a massive level of support underneath. 
uh, into the 850, radiating all the, all the way into the 900. And I said, in the trading room, I said, you know what? This market needs to present evidence that it is weak and will continue lower at least into the next 30 minutes to an hour. And I said, we don't have that. So from this point on, uh, the Dow had relative strength. This is the chart of the Dow. The, uh, the Dow had relative strength and compared to all the other indices. Russell was one of the in, oh, one of the weakest indices that was red uh, and was going deep red. And NASDAQ was following. The S&P was like hanging on a little bit more than, uh, than NASDAQ. So uh, the Dow was a little bit stronger and it was holding. And I was like, you know what? If it's going to hold, we're going to look for a long position. Now, at this point, I was very interested in this area right here. Very, very interested in this area. And then, you know, I did not take the opportunity to go in long here based on the little breakout. This is a two minute chart based on this little breakout because the risk to reward ratio was very asymmetric and I was really running into a lot of resistance. So I just wanted, you know what? I said to myself, you know what? We just have to wait a little longer because uh, when the uh, when the Dow was trying to trigger here, Nasdaq and Russell were just making uh, were just making some new lows, and I'm like, no, there's strong divergence. When two indices are weak, um, we still don't have enough price evidence because. What could have happened here is that the price could have shot up a little bit because wine had a relative strength. And then the next thing that could have happened because of the weakness in the Dow and in Russell, the market could have turned around and it could have went lower. So that therefore our YM could have turned around and the market would have taken YM lower with it because of synchronicity. So I just waited, you know, I just waited. Typically I'm done between 930 and 10 o'clock or, you know, around this time. Uh, but as the time progressed, you know, I like I, I looked at it higher and then I said, you know what, if it pulls back, I'm going to look for a setup, you know, into the minor support zone, into this dotted line that will present like a textbook buy area. So let's see the market. Let's see what the market is doing. So at this point, I noticed this. And by the way, this is a two minute chart. So um, by the way, this is 250, not 450. This is the typo right here. So when the market pulled back, you know, when the market was literally tempted to pull back, you know, I was looking at this stall over here and I love the stalls, the pauses into the market, the little breaks that, you know, the bulls were literally charging here, running, 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 right? Just like you do, like when you're running, right? On the treadmill or outside or whatever, wherever you're doing your running, if you're running or even if you're walking faster, at one point you want to slow your pace, right? So you catch your breath. The same thing happens with the price action. So the, you know, the bulls were like charging into the first, uh, into the first uh, 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 10 to 15 minutes to the downside. And then it was a pretty impressive rallies from 945, right? And 945 is known as being a reversal time, big reversal time, but the context didn't help here. And I didn't want to get into this chop. So I wanted something that was clear. So this is the trade that we took here. We actually took uh, the entry at 150. We had the stop into the 100 and we had targets into 220. We hit all our targets and we went home, done. And I literally was done at 11 o'clock so actually the chart went a little bit higher here into the two uh into the 220 i trailed everything so what i do is i trim into target so evidently i trimmed into the 220 area but my last lot trail was into the 200 so that meant full 50 uh full 50 point profit that's 250 dollars right here per contract per contract uh here's another trade that i called today uh, this is actually a swing trade. So it's not a day trade. It's a swing trade, but I called it today. So today, two trades, one swing and one um, and one uh, uh, day trade. Uh, this is the uh, trade that we took. We took um, we took live cattle long at one hundred forty dollars. I think this is, has a really strong potential to run back into the 145 or this top right here into the 146 to 147. It's a nice uptrend. It had a little bit of uh, volatility couple of weeks ago, but it's back on track. I re really like the way it is trading right now. Let's talk about a trade that we executed on Friday. This was, uh, th this was actually last week. Uh, we had a huge range that developed in the overnight trading session. You can see that we have some levels in here. We have bullish above and we have 
uh, some sell below here. So that means this dotted line, the red dotted line means that if the price trades below, we should be looking for uh, the bearish side and we should look for, uh, for you to definitely look to short. And when we look for the uh, purple line, we want to make sure that we are long. So at this point, I got in right here. And then the price came back down, right? I was looking for a rotational point to add to my trade, but then I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's such a choppy market. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep my stop right under this pivot. Remember, in volatile markets, you're going to have really wide stops. If you think that you cannot stomach the wide stops into the market, guess what? You're going to be stopped out all the time and you're going to blow up your account. This is a this is a characteristics of uh, characteristics, really heavy characteristic of volatile markets. And in fact, you should be giving really wide stops if you want to trade this market. But again, here we uh, definitely paid. Uh, we had uh, this is RTY. Each point is fifty dollars, and we had a beautiful breakout. So we lived through the pullback. We didn't freak out. We didn't say like, "Oh my God, red! I, I'm seeing red. I gotta get out. I'm seeing red. I gotta get out." Stop trading with that red psychology. Remember, when you see red, that may be the best buying opportunity of your life. Okay, but you need to make sure that you have a technical reason to get into the trade. So here's the velocity that we had. It hit, hit actually all our targets, 26 points. That is $1,300 with one contract. This is with a full-size contract. You don't have to trade with a full-size contract if you have a smaller trading account size, right? So you could have made $130 if you would have traded, if you would have had a $5,000 account. Guys, that is more than 5% per trade. Here's another trade that we had. This is silver. This is a swing trade. So those two examples are day trades. This is a swing trade right here. Take a look at the nice move that we had to the upside, right? This is where we got in. I called it a long. It hit our, our targets. And by the way, long-term silver and gold are still looking very much bullish. This is silver from uh, one of my members that actually sent me a snapshot of his uh, account. Uh, her account, I'm sorry, of her account. And you can see that she was trading the micro. So again, with a super, super small account size, the margin requirements like $1,200 or something like that. It's really ridiculous. Here's how much money she made based on that really small, small, small risk that she had. All right, this is GC. Uh, I have a long-term trade in GC and uh, this is gold, long-term trade in GC. This is where you see the arrow last year in March, a year ago, I have been in this trade since last year. And you can see where the trade is uh, trading right now. This is conviction. I would have not had stayed into this trade had I not stayed to my trading plan. The trading plan, in the trading plan, you need to have your entry, your stop, your targets and management. When the trade does not hit your stop, you have to stay in the trade. So as long as the stop is not being blown out, you stay with the trade. You stay with the conviction because you took the trade for because you had reasons to take the trade to the long side. I took oil long, for example. So I did not trade CL, just a quick disclaimer, but I traded USO. There was a lot of risk in CL and it was pretty wobbly last year uh, in uh, April. Remember when it went negative, it went, then it went to $6. So I did not trade oil, but this would be, if I would have traded futures oil, but again, very high risk. My decision was not to trade CL, but to trade USO. I'm going to show you the USO trade in just a second. So here's where we could have got in. And of course we traded this. If you look at our portfolio, we traded this, but swing traded, not investing because in investing, we went at USO, right? So this is USO. This is the bar that, I, that got me into the trade right here. Uh, it was actually into the $16. And look at my return. This is from my investment investing account. I have, a, I have three accounts, one day trading, one swing trading, and one investing account. And I'm really well diversified. But this is the one account where I took based on, uh, based on the risk, I took a thousand uh, shares and I got in. This is the return almost two years later by not doing a thing, not lifting a finger. If you see the market crashing, this can be a huge trading opportunity for us. So FOMC can present a big opportunity for us. And I know it's sad for me. It's really sad for me to say this. Uh, and it, I really don't want to say it, but every every geopolitical uh, divergence that is happening right now uh, can produce a divergence in the market and can present a massive trading opportunity, something close to this. So you can imagine how awesome and empowered you are to make this kind of return 
only on a thousand shares, not lifting and not pressing a button, no heavy lifting. So if you're ready to trade in sync with powerful moves from institutions, with powerful momentums and the trades, and to be present on the top of the wave and ride the wave like a surfer, if you're ready to eliminate frustration from trading, if you're ready to trade with clarity and definitely stress-free, if you're ready to become consistent, eliminate the noise and know which time frames to watch from different for different times of the day. And if you're ready to learn a methodology, methodology that works for you and every single asset, whether you're trading stocks or options or forks or any or futures or anything, this is a universal system that follows institutional money, then this webinar is for you. Uh, because what you need is that burning desire. How bad do you want it? right? How bad do you want to supplement your income? How bad do you want to create an income? I mean, I had that burning desire because I had very long commute times. I was definitely working uh, in investing. So for me, it wasn't a big jump. Let's say I was, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I was working, you know, uh, as a bank teller or something. And then I jumped into trading. You could definitely do that. Everybody can do that. That's the beauty about trading because you can come from all walks of life and learn how to trade. It's not rocket science. So, you know, just I'm here to break that myth that trading is super hard. Yes, you need to follow the rules. You need to be educated. You need to have discipline. You need to have patience. But you need to have the education, which is the foundation. It's where you build up your wealth. I don't know about you, but when I started trading, I took so many trading classes because I was coming from investing, but I wanted to create income. Income comes from day trading. You have access to your cash every single day. So at the end of the day, today, let's say I took that trade and if I made $750 on that uh, YM trade and I took it with, I don't know, three, four contracts, then that money's in my pocket. I'll have access to it. It's not, uh, it's not tied up to a position. It's not like USO. It, it, USO, we're still holding it. Uh, for example, like gold, we're still in it. I have that position. I can't take the cash and run. But with day trading, you can get in and out quickly and have access to your cash. And that's what I love about it. So if I want to go now, you know, have dinner at a nice restaurant, I go with my TD Ameritrade card and I pay for it with the profits from today. So that's the beauty about uh, beauty about day trading. Uh, discipline, you need to follow your plan. Guys, make a trading plan. I, I'm not kidding. Take a piece of paper right now and, you know, lay it out. You know, the, first of all, start with the time when you're available to trade. Start with the strategy that you want to deploy. And remember, in order to make money in trading, you don't need 10 strategies. You don't need sophisticated strategies. You need one and done. Literally, I teach, for example, 10 trading strategies, right? Because for different market environments, for uh, different, uh, 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 you know, a context and all these different situations that pop up in the market. But literally, if you have the patience, you can apply only one strategy and make money off of that strategy. Okay, literally. And that is the most common strategy. There is only one common strategy, whether it's a buy strategy or a sell strategy that uh, is super, super powerful. And if you wait for that one strategy to line up, that's all you need. So lay that out in the trading plan and say, hey, I'm a price action trader. And if you are a price action trader as well, write it down and say, hey, I'm going to trade from, let's say, 930 to 10 o'clock. And this is what I'm going to be watching. I'm going to watch the indices or I'm going to watch stocks that are pulled back, for example, into a desired, uh, you know, specific confluence area or support or resistance. And I'm going to wait for this strategy to form. But again, you have to wait for the strategy to form. You don't buy a support and you don't short into resistance. You have to wait for price evidence. And that's one of the reasons why 97% of the new traders that just start and just start trading uh, fail because they, they think that, oh, it's a buy off support. It's a short off, uh, off of resistance. Uh, no, it's a little bit more complex than that. But if you learn how it's done and you only learn it once, guys, and, you know, think about it. You're just getting better at it and better at it and better at it. It's just like when you first start cooking, right? First, you do like a dish that you 
uh, that you saw on TV, you print the recipe and you loved it. It turned out perfect, right? Then because you loved it so much, the next time you do, you put your own touch on it and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to add a little bit of wine or I'm going to put a little bit of hot, hot sauce over it or we're going to do this. So you're just going to improve it until you're having the ultimate, ultimate recipe. Trading is the same. You're going to have the ultimate recipe for your trading plan. Uh, have a plan as well, for example, when you're achieving targets. Don't get, you know, very anxious when you have achieved target of not knowing what to do and pull yourself out of the market. My mentor taught me never to pull myself out of the market. My mentor taught me to always let the market take me out. Don't take yourself out of the market. Even if you hit target, stay in. Because there may be more juice to that trade and have an active trailing system in place to trail that trade, okay? Um, hey, X Fluxes, what broker do you use? I use TD Ameritrade. Um, all right, so focus, no distractions because I only trade two hours. Guess what? No Facebook, no Twitter, no looking out the window, no petting your dog or your cat, no running for a coffee, no bathroom breaks because you're only working for two hours okay you can't afford to miss a beat unless you want to trade eight hours right and then you take breaks that's why you're not going to be very productive because even if you work eight hours you're not going to have you know much done because you're still going to be constantly taking breaks so two hours focus and you don't even have to focus two hours right? Because sometimes the trades are lining up and you're done. Uh, and you need to have conviction, conviction and perseverance. Perseverance is very important for trading, okay? Don't beat up, don't, don't beat up yourself if you have a losing trade. There's a reason why you, you lost on the trade. Study it, okay? Study and see what, what you did wrong on that trade. Print it out. No blinking, Mike, Mike. <laughs> Literally almost no blinking. And that, that reminds me of that Mickey Mouse cartoon when they would put toothpicks <laughs> to hold their eyelids. Yeah, something like that. All right. So I trade from home. You know, thank God, because this is the best, best. I won't even consider a job. I consider myself retired because it is not a hobby. It's literally I love what I'm doing. You can generate, depending on your account size, anywhere from 5,000 to even uh, to 500 or 5,000 and more, depending on your account size. So you have very realistic uh, expectations. It's very possible for you if you trade with one contract to make $500 a day, uh, or if you trade with good position sizing up to a contract, if you're trading micros, very, very, very possible. Um, I trade futures for a living now for the last 10 years. Like I said, I was a day trader for stocks, right? I was day trading stocks and I was trading stocks from 9.30 when the market opened and I would do my homework before that because you have, when you're day trading stocks, you have to start about 8.30 because you have to do all your work. Not with futures trading, right? You don't need that much time because you only have four charts. All right, so I trade in sync with the power moves of institutions. I focus on high velocity. What does that What does that mean? You see where my where I took my trade today that I showed you the chart in the Dow. When I placed my order, the velocity came and hit it. So what does that tell you? That we're trading in sync with the algos, with the institutional money flow. So I only trade for a couple of hours a day and I'm done. I, basically, I watch four charts. Obviously, I watch more charts because I'm trading stocks and I'm also uh, trading commodities like you saw, live cattle. Uh, we also have a trade in, um, uh, in some other commodities, okay? And I deploy precise strategies at specific times and locations, just like algorithms do, okay? Uh, what can you trade? Uh, what can you day trade and what can you swing trade if you're trading futures? Well, you can swing trade, you can swing trade basically commodities. I don't use commodities to day trade because they have a lot less volume and I'm looking for specific criteria, volume, velocity, uh, and uh, 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 volatility into uh, indices. And I don't have that. I don't have that 
Sometimes I do have it in gold or silver, maybe once in a while, but definitely it's not in, in, snow, uh, in soybeans or corn. I was going to say snow beans, <laughs> soybeans. All right. So uh, wheat or rough rice or et cetera. These are great for swing trading, live cattle, fetal cattle. You could see live cattle, uh, very bullish today. This is from today. Feeder cattle as well. Very bullish today. Uh, I use um, uh, I use meats, metals, grains, maybe currencies at time. They have been very choppy lately, and I have stayed I have been staying away from uh, currencies for a couple of years or so. Uh, but energy, sometimes you can day trade crude oil or even gasoline. Gasoline is a little thinner, but crude oil makes a really good uh, really good uh, pattern. For example, natural gas swing. Yes, we swing trade natural gas, but I don't day trade. Day trading material is the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ, Russell. Maybe VIX if you're into uh, cardio. Yeah, you could do a little bit of VIX as well, or you can hedge, you know, your uh, portfolio or your um, day, your, um, sorry, your long-term portfolio with it. I have very specific areas on my charts, and this is a snapshot from uh, today's charts. Uh, you can see that I have bullish above levels and pretty much all the indices. These ones, um, this is the Dow, this is the S&P, this is NASDAQ, this is Russell right here in the middle. And these are my, this is basically my trading universe. So you see, I don't have it on a list. I have the charts. So it's really hard for me to miss the trade when uh, when when you're looking at just these uh, these six charts, isn't it? All right, so trading, like I said earlier, it's a, a rule-based system. It's about finding those high out trades, finding that needle in the haystack that has the possibility to move higher because there's a reason why I traded Dow today and I didn't take him in the S&P. There's a reason why I didn't trade NASDAQ today. And that was because YM had relative strength in the context of a little bit strength into the market. And uh, the Dow stocks were behaving a little bit more bullishly off the open than NASDAQ stocks or mini S&P stocks. Uh, so or Russell stocks. So uh, I have a very strict selection criteria. So I do my homework really, really well. Uh, you're also uh, waiting for it setup. So I wait for that perfect opportunity just because the price is moving up. I'm not going to jump in long. If the price is moving uh, down, I'm not going to jump in short. So I have really well thought um, criteria. Money management, which is very important. And of course, mindset. So why futures? For those of you he that are here and say, hey, I don't care about futures, like I or I don't know anything about futures. There's not much different than the stock market, but it has a lot more advantages than the stock market. Uh, if you can Google on your own, you can find out the special tax advantages. Needless to say, the reporting at the end of the year, you just get a 1099B form, boom, and you run with it. You put it in your system or you give it to your account and you're done. You know, it's, it's a lot less complicated. And of course, it's going to reduce your um, uh, your accounting uh, fees, right? And all that. Um, so you can take up a, a short position with these. Uh, you have the massive advantage of buying power. Wow. You can make more money with less. Uh, it is an income producing um, 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 strategy. It's an income producing style of trading because you day trade. Uh, you could also do wealth generation or swing trading, right? Like I have the position in gold or like I'm trading USO or like I'm swing trading like cattle. Uh, you have different tick values and price ranges. You have minis and micros available depending on your account size. So you don't have to have a really large account size to take you know, the trades with uh, or be unable to take the trades with. You have micros available. So it's literally impossible for you to skip a beat. You don't need any special indicators in order to trade. Uh, do, do you have, like I said, huge tax advantages, no pump and dump, safe from rumors, no manipulation, no downgrades or upgrades. And what I love about the futures market, oh, and by the way, you don't have time if you don't have time to trade two hours in the morning, but hey, you squeeze time, you know, instead of, you know, watching the next uh, uh, Tiger King on Netflix, um, you know what, just, uh, you know, stop with the binge watching and do something for yourself. This is the great opportunity to roll up your sleeves and say, hey, what is the market doing at 9, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night? You get really great, fantastic moves around that time. So look at the market at night. You don't, if you don't have, you have full-time job, meetings, commitments, et cetera, 
but hey, if you have a little bit of time in the evening, you could do an AON trade. That's an all or nothing trade. Sometimes I look at the market and uh, if I see a trading opportunity, I put my order in, my stop, my target. And the next morning, I'm either stopped out or if I'm not stopped out, I wake up in cash. Okay, so that's great. Um, as you know, in order to uh, start day trading, you have to have a minimum of $25,000 in your trading account. And um, you get leverage two to one or four to one. Uh, and if you lose a penny, then guess what? You know what? You, your day trading status out the door. With the futures trading, the reason why a lot of traders gravitate towards futures is because you don't have to have that 25K. You could have $5,000 and start trading futures. The best thing is that if you lose a penny or a dollar or $2,000, hey, you can still day trade or swing trade or whatever you want to do in your account because you have to have sufficient cash in your account to cover the margin requirements. And guess what? If you're trading micros, of course you can because the margin requirement is going to be about $500 to $700 and you can still trade futures. I'm going to show you an example here. So, for example, I'm going to show you an example of, uh, you know, a, a stock, stocks versus futures. And I have put together, you know, two charts, one of the Qs and one of the uh, NASDAQ futures, right? So, as you know, the margin requirement went up a little bit, but uh, let's consider 14000 to buy 100 shares of the Qs and let's consider $17,000 to buy one contract of NASDAQ, right? And you guys know if you... Uh, if the price goes up a cent in the queues, you make a buck. And if it goes up in NASDAQ, um, um, then uh, one point is $20 in NASDAQ. So if the price goes up a point, you make 20 bucks, right? So if, for example, in uh, the queues, if you have a 50 cent move, right, you're making $50 with 100 shares. But if you have a 50 point NASDAQ move, and lately you have seen NASDAQ moving 300 to 400 points like nothing, are you going to make a thousand, a thousand dollars. So let, we put it to the test and I show traders that, for example, using the same strategy, we use the breakout, uh, we use the breakout strategy. Um, um, and we got into this trade, the trade duration, it is very important to highlight was 20 minutes, right? So 20 minutes, 20 minutes is kind of like the time that I, a whole positions with into that velocity, sometimes way less, sometimes Sometimes it, it takes a little longer until it develops, but most of the time, because I use velocity on my side, uh, the trade is very quick. In and out, instant gratification, love it. I'm done shutting it down, going for a walk. Then I come back and I look at swing trades and that's it. That's my day. So in this trade, we waited for an entry. This is the Q's buying power is 16,000, 100 shares, right? Because we needed to use the buying power. And uh, we uh, closed the trade with three uh, with two hundred thirty seven dollars, right? In 20, 20 minutes, that's not bad using your strategy. Now we took the same trade with Nasdaq, same risk, same risk, buying power, very close to the same seventeen thousand dollars to uh, to the Qs. Uh, this is Nasdaq futures. We took it with one contract, and in twenty minutes, in twenty minutes, we were up two thousand dollars using the same risk versus the cues versus the cues so i'm asking you right now if you're you know if you have so much conviction for stock trading and you're day trading stocks are you still seeing that the possibility here are you still reading the fine print it's like hello okay like would you rather spend 20 minutes using the same buying power making 200 dollars or you want to make your money work for you. And with the very similar buying power, you can take one contract and make $2,000. But wait, there's more. Hey, I don't, let's say you don't have a large trading account, right? That's not large, it's considered small. Uh, anything that is between 30,000 and 50,000 now is considered a small trading account size because of the volatility that we're having and um, everything else that is surrounding these events but take a look at you have a small trading account size let's say five thousand dollars with one contract the buying power is seventeen hundred dollars price goes same pattern same strategy everything is the same boom 181 dollars very close to the queues right very close to the queues so but this is only risking one so take a look at this guys one thousand seven hundred dollars buying power 
compared to $16,000 buying power. Here, using $16,000, you make $200. And here, with $1,700, you make $181. That's 5% on one trade, okay? Morning patterns that work 80% of the time. Uh, first of all, the market opens at 9.30. And don't trade pre-market. I don't. I like to wait until the market opens. I like to trade with volume, vol of velocity, et cetera. So I have my own strategies that I deploy. I make money, like I said, in 20 minutes, an hour, and I'm done. So the market opens at 9.30. Typically, if the market shoots up, if it does a shallow pullback, then for a continuation higher. But sometimes the market gets a little bit, you know, take the, the market, uh, the market just chops up a little bit more before it starts going. But if it starts going finally, then it, uh, every single pullback can be bought. All right. So as you know, geopolitical events do not wait for the market to open. This is a great time to learn how to trade futures because they're very active at night in the evening. So you can take advantage of this, right? There's no, there, you're not going to have gap up surprises or anything like that. Okay, so is it easy to succeed in trading? Guys, I could tell you one thing right now. We wouldn't be here if it was like rocket science. It was not possible. Everybody can do it. It's just the amount of time and conviction they have to sit down and learn how it's done. You know, I, I often, you know, encounter individuals that say, hey, you know what? I'm going to come in the, in the trading room because I want to learn how it's done. I don't explain, you know, the course that we teach in the trading room in the trading room we meet to make money that's it okay so it's just like you know you're you're having someone that is going through is it's going to uh, uh it's going into a surgery room you know a person on the street walks into a surgery room and talks to the doc and say hey doc move aside because i want to see if i like to perform brain surgery OK, I want to see if I can perform brain surgery. And if I like it, I may go to med school. The <laughs> Trading is the same. Uh, Carl, is it realistic trading future is evening? Absolutely. You just have to watch certain time frames. OK, so there are certain time frames that are uh, different than the morning because the morning is so active. Just zoom out on your time frames and it's totally possible. I have a lot of traders that are trading even commodities and oil. Yes enough volume to go in and out, enough volume. And because of that, Carl, because you brought it up, I want to add something. Uh, JP Morgan, uh, Morgan St Chase, um, um, Morgan Stanley have allocated traders from their stock trading debt, more traders, they took traders from their stock trading debt and allocate them for the futures market. Now with everything that's going on geopolitically. OK, so guys, learn before you dive in. You should uh, stay with the power of the institutional moves because they create the waves and you want to make sure that you ride the waves with them. Don't go against them. All right. So the next time you take your trade, think about it. Who's on the other side of the trade? Would a hedge fund do this? Would an algo do this? We program to do this. And you're going to, you know, think about it and you're going to think twice about it. But don't think too long because trading is about identifying, taking it. OK, uh, so it's not really great that thinking stuff, that overthinking. So think about this. 10 percent of the traders make money from the rest of the 90 percent of traders. So is it easy to succeed in trading? Well, if it's not hard. Uh, but here's there's a trick to it. Everybody's writing books about trading. You have so many books online of strategies. You have, you know, how to use indicators, um, how to, I don't know, um, um, you know, identify candles, you know, patterns, formations, what have you. So you have all that information online for free. You have a lot of information from books, written books. You go to Barnes and Noble, they have like racks and racks of shelves and books, shelves of books. You go on Amazon and you find like millions of books about trading. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. You read a book, you have nobody to talk to. How do you know if that strategy is working or not? How do you know if that trader is successful or not? Does that author have a trading record? Mm, maybe, I don't know. You know, I haven't read a book where I would literally see a trading record. 
published or on a website or something. No, they write books. That's what they are. They're educators and there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, it's, you have to learn from somewhere. But what they, these books lack is how to glue the chapters together. How do I blend the pattern with technical analysis? How do I blend my strategy with my management of the trade? And that's what you don't get in the books. Because if trading was easy as, you know, reading a book or 20 or 50, uh, then everybody would read the, you know, the 20 trading books and then they would be set for life. But it's no, you, you, there has to be someone that is going to put everything together for you or an indicator. Yeah, you could have an indicator, buy here, sell there, whatever. Long term, long term, these indicators may work in a trending market. When the market is conflicting like it is right now, this, this indicator can blow up your account. OK, so why futures? First of all, it's the income from home. But first of all, let's talk about inflation, right? It's an inflation depression recession have you guys heard yellen say that inflation is going to get very uncomfortable for the rest of 2022 and going into 2023 it is going to skyrocket right that's what she said and she mentioned no recession no re why did she bring up recession why did she even mention recession well let me tell you most of the most of the millions are made in recession in inflation, okay? So this is a skill that is going to take you outside of that. I thrived into the, uh, in 2020 because I actually, my performance was way beyond my average, my personal average, I beat my own record because there are far more trading opportunities. The same thing with recession. When we had the financial crisis in 2008, I still have stocks. Like, you know, you're going to laugh. Yes, I do have stocks. There were penny stocks back then. For example, Sirius Satellite. I bought it at, I think it was 12, 12 cents or 13 cents or something like that. It's trading right now at six bucks. I still own it, right? So you have those opportunities. You don't even need to have a lot of money to make money, okay? So can anyone, can anyone make money in trading? Yes, if you have the right approach to trading, if you have the proper trading education, if you have a mentor, if you know what you're doing, and if you follow the plan, okay? Obviously, in trading, you should have only four outcomes, big wins, small wins, break-even trades, and very small losses. That's the basic. Um, all right, so we trade with a structural approach every single day. We trade live. I teach traders how to trade a very successful system that enables us to pull money out of the market in the first two hours or less. We trade momentum moves at specific times and precise technical patterns. Who else does this? Algos, right? Algos. So our method literally overrides any kind of news event. We flourish on news events because news events give us the follow through into target. Um, overrides any artificial indicator and dark pools and every, anything like that any any other indicator okay just have 30 seconds to wrap this up and uh if you guys want to jump into my trading room we we trade every single day we have a special for you we have special webinar bonus here i will present you the chart of uh, the risk chart for indices and commodities and also trading guidelines and these are special webinar bonuses that you're going to get with this uh if you sign up thanks so much kate for putting it out there it's $299 a month. Literally, this is nothing compared to what you can make uh, in the market. Uh, the deadline, like I said, if you want to take advantage of this, the deadline is Friday. Uh, it's uh, futures uh, live, tradeoutloud.com forward slash futures live. So thanks so much, Kate. We also, if you want to go outside and say, hey, you know what? I want to learn how it's done. I want to learn your system. By the way, we have a track record from 2000, uh, from 2016 and from 2008 or nine, I think, in the, uh, in the stock market. Uh, we have a course. It's available. We have an early bird special if you want to check it out or send me an email at info at tradeallout.com. More than happy to provide you with more information about the course, give you the full curriculum. This is going to take you from student to literally pro trader. So thanks so much, Kate and everybody. Thank you, John, for having me here today. 
All right, great, Anka. It's fantastic as always. And thank you for joining us. Look forward uh, to seeing you again on the next uh, summit in three months. And once again, to take advantage of Anka's offer, the link is in the chat box on the right, tradeoutloud.com slash futures live.